So now that we know a little bit more about Pythagoras, what we're going to do is we're going to try to find a distance that runs right along this length here from the top corner of E, the top vertex there, E, right through to C. So you can imagine this whole thing as a, as a rectangular prism or a box. We're looking for the distance or the length that goes from the top corner there right through to the opposite bottom corner inside that box. So how do we do that? Well, the trick is to use Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to use our a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but we're going to have to do it two times. So we'll do our first application. First of all, what we'll do is we'll place some values in here. So I'm going to go and say that this bottom side here, we'll say that that's 8 meters. We're going to say that this side over here is 6 meters from c to g, and the height of the box, or the height of the rectangular prism, is 7 meters. So where do we start? Well, we need our first application of Pythagoras theorem. What I'll do is I'm going to go and look for a hypotenuse along the bottom. I'll try to find this distance here from vertex H through the C. So we're looking for this pink line. We want to find that length there. Now, you might not be able to see it, but just lying flat on the bottom of the box, we've now got ourselves a right angle triangle. It doesn't look like a right angle, but right in here is your right angle. It just has a funny angle to it because of the way the picture looks. But if you want, we'll stand it up. So I'm going to stand this up now. I'm just going to color in our triangle. This is that bottom triangle there. It's yellow running along there. That's our 8 meter side that I've just drawn. And we've got that, that line here, HC, or the hypotenuse. I'm going to, once again, color that in the same color. And we'll put our values in that we have for that. So we've got 8 meters on the bottom. So I'm going to squeeze eight meters in here. That's eight meters. Now we need the height of this right angle triangle. There's our right angle. What is the height? That's dh there. We need to find that. Well, you can see we're missing something here. We need to put a value in here where I've put the x. Well, where is that value? It's over here on the other side. You can see six meters. That six meters, if I put a line through there, is exactly the same distance over here, okay, because it's a prism. So we can put six meters here, and we can put six meters there. It's the same, same distance. And now we have to find the length of this line, okay, which will be HC. If I put H there, and there's C, we need to find that distance of HC. So we're going to use Pythagoras again. We've got A squared plus B squared equals C squared. They're the two short sides. We're going to square those values and add them together, what we end up with is 6 squared plus 8 squared. That's exactly the same question as our very first one that we actually looked at. We know that we're going to get 100 equals c squared, and then we have to square root it to get the value of c. And our value of c, even though I've called that bottom point c, don't get confused by that, that's just a vertex, it's just, just a name. The convention is that that's our c value there. So c squared is also known as, in this particular example, we're now calling it h c squared and we're going to find the distance of c or h c squared and that's going to be the square root of 100 so we get c equals 10. so c equals 10 and i can squeeze a 10 value right into there so we've now gone and found the length from h to c okay, using this triangle here so how can we use this 10 meters to try to figure out this blue line the length of e c well, we've got 10 meters, and if you, if you have a look inside this box now, what we've got is a triangle, a right angle triangle, that's actually sort of tilted and facing towards us. The right angle is in here. I'm just coloring that in green now. There's our right angle, and this triangle is facing towards us. It's got a base length of 10 meters. We don't really see the height here, and we need to find the length of that blue line. Can we find out where that height is, first of all? Well, you can see, once again, we've got another length over here, which is exactly the same, and it's 7 meters. So I'm going to put two lines through there. Those two lines mean that this side is exactly the same as that one there. So 7 meters is the same as 7 meters over here. So I'm going to use that, and we'll, once again, we're going to draw another triangle. So I'm going to say that's 7 meters there. Actually, I'm going to make that yellow so we don't get too confused by it. That yellow line there, same yellow line here. And we used this orangey colored line over here. I'm going to use that along there, but this this way it's I'm going to put it on the on the straight angle, so it's a right angle. And we're looking for a blue line, so I'll make this blue. And that's our distance there from E to C. So if I just name these, we've got E, we've got C, 
and that bottom corner we had called that H. We know that that's 10 meters, that, that line down the bottom, 10 meters. We know the height is seven meters. So I'm gonna plug seven meters there. There's seven meters, there's 10 meters. We know that's a right angle because it's a prism. And now we just need to find the distance from E to C that's gonna give us that length along the inside of that box. So seven squared plus 10 squared, just using Pythagoras again. That will give us a long side squared. Now I could call it C squared, but we've already called the previous part of the working out C. We use C over there. So how about this time I call it X, okay, just for something different. You can call it whatever you want, just it's any letter for, for algebra, but we'll call it X, X squared. Or if you wanna just stick with using these, these vertex values, these vertices, you could go and call it EC squared. Doesn't really matter. So seven squared plus 10 squared is X squared or EC squared. If we put those values together and we square root them, what you end up with is EC or X. EC is X, it's the same thing. EC or X is equal to 12.206. I think we get a whole bunch of values after that. Now, once again, if we want to try to answer this question to maybe two decimal places, just do a Quick refresher on that again. How would we answer that to two decimal places? Well, we just go straight down to those values there. We've got 12.20, they're the two decimals that we care about. But once again, you have to always pay attention to the number that comes after that second decimal place. Is it five or above? Yes, it is, it's a six. So that zero needs to get rounded up to a one. So our answer, our final answer is gonna be the length of EC equals 12.21, and that is to two decimal places.